Commons and Lewis, we appreciate him coming out. He's got this new little graffiti ordinance that he's going to be introducing, and uh, he's so kind of offered to come out and talk to us about it. Mike. My mouth is big enough, I don't need a microphone. Um, well, thank you, Adam, well, and thank you to the board for having me out tonight. Um, probably I should start by thanking 83 people that you know take a little time out of their home life try to make our neighborhood a little safer, a little cleaner, and a better place for all of us to live and for the children uh, to be raised and for businesses to do business in our world. Uh, groups like this, groups like the Clearing Night Force, the Archer Heights group that spend time on the weekends making sure our alleys, our parks, our schools are, are just kept, somebody has an eye on them so they can report to the police as in my opinion and, and in the opinion of the police department, has had a major impact on the 23rd Ward on the south of the side. Uh, I have to say the south of the side now because probably half the people in this room don't live in my ward room uh, <laughs> with the new ward room. But it doesn't make a difference. It, it's still all of our community. Uh, we all live here and we all want to make sure it's a, a better place to live. And it's, you know, it's important that people like me uh, and, and the business leaders say thank you for all that you do. Uh, we appreciate it. The, the citizens that are not involved appreciate it because it's, it's helping make all of our lives a little better. Um, so, Al had asked me to come out tonight and talk about an ordinance that I sponsored in the Chicago City Council. And I'll give you just a quick little background. I know uh, we have another speaker here tonight, uh, a newly elected judge who's from our community, Liz Hayes. And, and I think it's really important when Liz was running and we tried to tell as many people as we could, that we should try and let more people to the bench from areas like ours. Because most of the judges never came from our community. So when people go and they go down, uh, whether it's a graffiti case or they testify on behalf of, of the community, judge, having people like Liz Hayes sit on the bench, it'll have a real big impact on neighborhoods like the Northwest and South of the South. Because she knows what graffiti and what garage break-ins and kind of crimes that we have out here, the negative impact they have on the community. So uh, having her sit there and hopefully we'll be dealing with some of the issues that we all deal with will be very helpful to, to the 20th Ward. Probably about two, three months ago, I started hearing quite a bit from the three different neighborhood watch groups about the spike in graffiti. And not only was there more graffiti that started happening, but it was taking longer for the city of Chicago to come out and remove the graffiti with the blasters. Just a quick history on those graffiti blasters. They were probably put in effect uh, and brought into the Chicago about 19, I got elected in 95, I want to say about 1998 is when those machines were brought in. A lot of those machines are still the original machines. So they're very old, they're very expensive, and they're very hard to maintain. It takes a 150 operator, one of the heavy equipment operators, to uh, drive them. You have to have a labor on there and you have to have a painter. So you have three city employees on there. So the cost has gone up of, of these machines and then the maintenance has gone up to keep them running. And due to the fact that you know, all the government agencies are having their little uh, you know, financial difficulties, we were noticing that the, the machines, when they were broke down, was taking a little longer to get them. Uh, Repair. The painters, some of the painters were laid off of the city, so uh, some of the machines were down to, due to the, uh, not having enough painters. So when graffiti was happening in Archer Heights and the Clarion and Garfield Bridge, it was taking a little longer to come off, and as it takes longer to come off, people are starting to drive up and down Archer, their alley, uh, 63rd, or whatever, whatever their route is, and see the graffiti out there over the long way. And then about six to eight weeks ago, by Vinham Park, about 30 houses in one alley uh, between, I think it was Leamington and Laramie, were hit real bad at the end of the And it sat out there for five days. So you can imagine driving home at night, and you're coming back from work, and you're driving down your alley, you put your car in the garage, and you're looking at these pitchforks and these crowns every night. And I start hearing from a lot of people saying, well, what's going on? Are there games taking over our neighborhood? Uh, so 
with the input of you know, your group and the clearing group and the Archer Heights, I introduced an ordinance that is going to really, really get tough on, on graffiti, people that commit graffiti crimes if they're caught. Now, I have to be realistic. Uh, when you're talking about an ordinance of city council, you have to pass it, so that takes 26 votes. <coughs> My ordinance hits these kids real, real hard. It hits them hard in the pocketbook, but that's not the most important part. What it does, it really gives groups like this the ability when you go to court to go before a judge, not before a hearing officer. My ordinance states the graffiti violations totally out of the administrative process at um, Superior Street. So no more just tickets. And it's my ordinance says you have to go before a judge. And the reason is, is because between the Garfield Region Legal Watch Group, Archer Heights, and Clearview, and other parts of the city, now that I've introduced the ordinance and we've got some coverage on it, I'm hearing from people all over Chicago that want to come down and testify when I have the hearing. I'm going to ask your group to come down too and tell the other members of the city council pretty much what they know, but I want you to explain to them what you see and what effect you think it has on Garfield Ridge and BA 11 when you're out there. Because it's just pretty much common sense that it's not that the neighborhoods aren't gang infested. What you have is you have a, a, a gang member that's either a wannabe or a legitimate gang member. And he's trying to mark his turf, his the alley or some business or a home for a stop sign and say this is this is my turf, I live here, and keep your gang out, keep your other gang out here because it's my area. But what happens is, is again common sense, is what you're seeing in other parts of the city, all these shootings every weekend, every time you turn the TV on, all that is the result of rival gangs. So if we start having these gang members mark their turf out there and it stays out there, all that's going to happen is they're going to start fighting. And it's going to be kids like this that unfortunately get caught in the crossfire. And we just can't afford to let that happen to the kids, to the adults, and to our property owners. So I am going to ask you to come down when I have my, my hearing. And I'm going to bring in a lot of people. I'm not just going to ask people to come in and complain about graffiti because that seems to be a pretty, pretty much a no-brainer. I want the judges there. I'm going to invite the chief judge to come down because I, I believe truly that if the judges hear how devastating some of this graffiti can be on a community, they'll ask their judges that work for them to be a little tougher. I'm going to ask the state attorney to come down and do the Alvarez because I want her prosecutors to know that these crimes are not just victimless crimes, they're, they're hurting property values, they're costing people money. I want the police department to come down because I want to hear exactly how many times they arrest these kids. My ordinance says that anybody from 18 down is considered a minor, 18 and above is, is an adult. We raise the fines dramatically. I mean up to $2,500 for an offense. Now I'm going to tell everyone in this room that there's a lot of members of the city council that are not going to support raising the fines of $2,500 because a lot of these kids don't have parents there. They may have a mother, they may, but chances are if they're causing trouble, they may not have a mother and father. So what happens a lot of times is they're with their grandmother or with their aunt or their legal guardian. And the ordinance says that if they get caught, their legal guardian is responsible to pay that money. And a lot of y'all are not going to support it. But what's more important than the monetary fine is the fact that if, if a judge, if we can prove that this is either a serious repeat offender and not just some kid that goes in by a garage or on a stop sign and you know, sprays on them, you know, I love Lucy like, 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 like a young kid would do. But I'm talking about the pitchforks and the, and the crowns. If these are gang members, if we can prove to the judges that these are serious offenses, and we want them to get a little tougher. And maybe some of these kids or young adults spending a weekend at Hotel California, and I'm not talking about on the West Coast, I'm talking about 26 in Cal, will really, really wake them up and scare them into the fact that you know, let them, if they're there for two nights, they're going to say, maybe this isn't the life I really want for, for myself if I get continue to go on and on and on. So uh, we'll see. Uh, the hearing, my hearing is going to be sometime in August. Uh, or the, at the very latest, the first week of September. 
and uh, we'll see if we can convince enough people to support this ordinance and try to make it a lot tougher on graffiti offenders. So that's just, that just graffiti. You know, there's so many other things that are, are happening out there. Uh, and it's good to hear from your CAPS representative that overall crime is down. Every time they show all these murders and, and these killings, you know, they show the map of the city and there's no blotches out here in the Garfield Ridge and Clearing. That's a good thing. And a lot of that is due to a lot of things. It's the neighbors, because they're not afraid to call. It's the Chicago Police Department, because we've got a young, good, aggressive team out here in the district now. And it's just due to the fact that we have a lot of built-in support in the neighborhood like this. A lot, of, a lot of city workers, a lot of policemen and women, a lot of firemen and women, who are a natural cushion for our community to prevent a lot of the crap that we see happening in other parts of the city. So in that respect, and I've said this probably 25 times in city council, every honor a policeman or a fireman or a policewoman or a firewoman, is, you know, I represent an area that has that built-in security and I'm very lucky for that. But we're all lucky for that because it's, it's the area where we all live and we want it safe. So, um, and then we have, you know, some good things happening in some of the parks. Uh, and I'm not going to go into a long speech here, but you know, we have improvements coming to Stars and Stripes and a few of the other parks in the neighborhood. We're trying to make sure you can see there's a lot of infrastructure work going on. You see a lot of crews out here uh, doing cement work and, and, and repainting. The one uh, group that's got everybody a little nuts right now is the gas company when they start ripping everything up and it takes them forever to restore the, the roads, but uh, we'll work on that. So if you like, I'll take questions now or I can sit down. Any question concerning your feed with the other man? You know, I, as I said earlier, uh, I've got a lot of calls from people that when I have a hearing from all of Chicago, want to come down and bring bills, bring pictures of what it's cost them. If the city uh, didn't come out and clean their graffiti, no matter what, because it's taken longer, would it cost them to clean it? Or would it cost them to repair the windows? Because that's the new thing, the action in the windows. Uh, so, yeah, you're right. It, it, we will do everything we can in my office. We know. If there's graffiti out there to, to knock on the door of the business owner or the homeowner and say, please come to court. A lot of people, as you know, if you go to court, they're a little scared. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's an intimidating thing if you're not used to getting up and testifying before a judge, letting the person that did the crime see that you're there. But, you know, it's, I've always said, if we work together, there's really nothing we can't solve. And if the people here take the time out of their got business schedules and come down to court, the business owners, at least the business owners, can make sure they, they can send somebody down there with, with some testimony. So, but I appreciate it. Mike, Peggy is one of our court advocates, so she goes to court and she sees it firsthand. So, yeah. you know, that's that's great. Well, congratulations to you because there's so many people that don't go And as you, if you're there, you know, you know, if you're a former, anybody that was a prosecutor, I was never, I'm not an attorney, but my son was a, 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 a Cook County State's attorney. And those, you know, those court cases are like factories. They got X amount of cases they got to crank out in the morning call and the afternoon call. So, you know, it's what what kind of conviction can we get? Most of the time it's a probation or uh, some kind of minimal uh, offense. And that's that's fine for certain things, but as as the graffiti starts to sit out there and impact communities, I think it's real important that we try and really send a strong message to these kids that we're not playing around with this. Awesome. Anybody else? Yeah, Shannon. Um, you talked about uh, jail time and fines. What about community service and getting these kids out there to clean up the work that they put out there? Well, because if they have to go out and clean it up, maybe they get a good idea of what it takes to try to get it. When I said earlier, I'm a little realistic where right? if, if somebody's living with their grandmother and they get and the judge has the ability to levy a twenty five hundred dollar fine. And this grandmother basically is just making it from month to month. That would be my compromise when I when I have the ordinance in the committee. It is okay, fine. I'm not as much worried about the money, but Al mentioned boot camp. You know, the SWAT program, going up and up and down, picking up papers or painting some, cutting leaves down, uh, and or sitting at 26th of California. So 
that would be the compromise I would solve for instead of the, the monetary. But I appreciate it because that is a good compromise. Anything just like you would do, uh, or I would do with our children, just to hold some of these kids accountable. Okay. Awesome. 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 Awesome.